this happened a few years back. My name is Pablo, and at the time this occurred, I was going on vacation with my girlfriend Allison to the West Coast. We searched online for quite a while trying to find the best places to stay for the best deals. After looking at a few hotels, my girlfriend suggested to try looking at Airbnbs in the area. It didn't take long to find some that seemed great. Eventually, we both agreed on one that was all around the best. A couple of weeks later, we got there, and when we saw it in person, it was just like the photos online. The property was in what appeared to be a really nice neighborhood. The house was very new and had a small but very nice yard. As for the house itself, it was also small but very nice. There was one bedroom, two bathrooms, a living room, dining room, and kitchen. We got inside and checked out the place, but over the first day, we didn't spend much time there at all. We were mostly out in the nearby cities doing things. When things got strange was the second night though. It was late, probably almost midnight, and Allison and I were getting ready for bed. I was in the bathroom brushing my teeth, and I heard a noise coming from down the hall, which I assumed to be Allison. But like 10 seconds later, I went into the bedroom to see Allison laying in bed. I asked her if she had just been out in the hall, and she responded no. I felt a little bit odd when she said that, but I brushed it off. I was sure there was a logical explanation, and nothing strange was happening. I got into bed and closed my eyes, and at some point that night, I woke up. I sat up in bed. It was like 4 a.m. or something like that, and Allison was still fast asleep. I wasn't sure what had woke me up, but I looked around the dark room. I couldn't really see anything, but about 30 seconds after waking up, I heard a noise coming from what I assumed was the kitchen area. The noise was of someone walking, and I couldn't tell where they were going. It was brief, but I was sure that someone was inside the house now. I stayed there though and didn't hear anything. As I sat there, I wondered if it really was somebody inside, and eventually I convinced myself that I was probably just paranoid. But to be safe, I got out of bed and turned on the light. When I reached the hallway, I turned the light on there too. I saw nothing unusual. I didn't hear anything else either. Then I moved into the living room and turned on those lights. I could see basically the whole place from there and then went into every single room. I didn't see anybody inside or a trace of someone either. I went back to bed and was able to fall back asleep. The next day went on as normal for us. We were once again gone for most of the day doing normal vacation stuff. The next night though, something similar happened. I was awoken in the night, this time by Allison. She told me that she heard something in the house. I got up again and was really confused as to what these noises were that we had been hearing. I did not turn on the lights this time. I wandered out into the hallway and looked off into the rest of the house. I was expecting to see nothing again, but this time though, I actually saw something. I saw at the corner of the dining room area, a closet door closing. I couldn't believe my eyes. I didn't see a person, but definitely saw the door close. I might have seen part of someone's arm closing it, but it was really dark. When I did, I wasn't sure how to react. Allison had left the bedroom and I turned around to see her walking towards me. I told her to get back inside the bedroom and I followed her. When we were both in there, I closed the door and locked it. She said that we should call the police, so we did. They said they would arrive within 15 minutes. During the time that we were waiting, I heard a noise again. It was the sound of a person walking inside the house. This time though, the footsteps were getting closer. They walked all the way to outside our bedroom door and then stopped. When they did, I couldn't help but yell to them that I had called the police. However, I didn't hear anything such as whoever they were walking away. After several more minutes, I did hear a siren from outside and the police had arrived. Only then did I hear more footsteps in the house. By the time the police made it inside, whoever had been there was now gone. The front door to the house though had been left unlocked. They searched the house, the property and surrounding area, but couldn't find whoever was there. We didn't stay in that house another night. We never found out who had been hiding inside but I'm just glad that we weren't harmed. My only experience of staying in an Airbnb was in the fall of 2018. At that time, I was going on a trip with my best friend, Jesse. We needed a place to stay, and Jesse looked on Airbnb and found a place that was a good price and in a pretty cool location. It was a small house in a large and busy neighborhood right outside of the city. From the outside, the house just looked normal, but inside, it was really nice. Unfortunately though, we were only getting the basement area of the house. I had thought that we would be getting the whole house, but there were other people living in the upstairs and we were just in the basement. 
This bothered me, and it bothered Jesse as well, but there was nothing that we could do about it now. It was a living room type of area, with a little kitchen, bathroom, and bedroom down there. It was the evening when we arrived, so we pretty much just got some food and then went to bed. There was only one bedroom, so Jesse slept in the bed and I slept on the couch out in the living area. We had turned out all the lights and I was trying to sleep when I thought I heard somebody coming down the stairs. I was confused as to why somebody would be coming down here. I didn't expect them to come all the way down the staircase, but they did. They arrived at the door, and then I saw the door open. Now it was completely dark down there, but I could see a figure of somebody in the doorway. They appeared to be looking around the room. When I saw them take a step inside, I closed my eyes and pretended to be asleep. I was terrified. I could barely hear them walking, and a short time later, I opened my eyes again. It appeared to be a woman, and she was standing outside the bedroom door on the other side of the room. I watched her try opening the door, but it was locked. She then dug into her pocket and pulled out a key. Then I spoke. I asked what she was doing. As soon as I said this, I could see her head quickly turn over to face me, and then she turned and darted out of the room and back up the stairs. I couldn't believe how quickly she had left, and I was now extremely creeped out. Why did she do that? I went over to the main door leading to the stairs, and I locked it. Finally, I was able to go back to sleep. I had planned to tell Jesse about this in the morning, and we could leave this Airbnb and report whoever that woman was. But for now, I was tired, and I figured she wouldn't do something like that again. Well, I was really stupid looking back, and I'm not sure why I thought that. Probably just from the long day of travel. But I woke up sometime later to the sound of the door opening. This is when I realized, if the woman had a key to the bedroom, of course she would have one to the other doors. I saw her enter the room again. This time, she wasn't walking towards the bedroom though. She was walking towards me. When she got within about 20 feet of me, I jumped up. I started running over to Jesse's bedroom, and when I did, the woman once again darted back out of the room and up the stairs. This time, I banged on Jesse's door as loud as I could, and eventually, Jesse got up, and we both packed up our stuff as quickly as we could and got out of there. Me and my mother wanted to rent a vacation home for me and my family for New Year's. When we were looking, we came across this house by the beach, and by the pictures, it looked very nice and modern. It was three bedrooms and two bathrooms, so we decided to book it. When me and my family arrived there, we met the host, and he seemed off. He gave us a tour when we got there, but when we entered the house, it did not seem like the one in the pictures. I thought we were in the wrong house, but we were at the same address that the guy gave us. I also noticed that there was a funky smell in the air. Furthermore, at the end of the tour, I saw another room that he didn't show us. He told us not to go back there and that it was off limits. I thought okay, but I was still kind of sussed out about the room being off limits and in the serious and quick tone that he said it. And to top it off, he looked like he had some interest in my mother and was kind of flirting with her, which of course I thought was really sick. After that guy slash host left the house, I took note in the car that he left in and we went on with our day. Fast forward a couple of hours later, I was on my way to one of the bedrooms, and I had an instinct to look to the closed off room. I saw there was a light on in that room, and I knew it was not on before, so I was kind of worried. I went over and let my dad know about it, but when he went to go check, the light was now off. Now this got me really scared, and it took me a while to fall asleep after that. Right when I was about to fall asleep, I saw what appeared to be a man run from across the yard. When I saw this, I was spooked out. I sat there in the bed thinking about that for a good 15 minutes, but then I was finally able to fall asleep. When I woke up, I saw that it was morning and I went into the living area. I looked outside and saw what looked like the host walking into that extra room that he told us was off limits. I looked to the other window to make it look like I wasn't looking at him, but then I saw the host's car parked on the other side of the road. Then I started to put the pieces together. I think that the host was sleeping in the garage while he was renting to us. I told my parents this, and they decided to go ask the host what he was doing in the house. When they did, they came back a short time later, running away. They came back into the house and told us to pack our things quickly and get in the car, so that's what we did. Within five minutes, we were speeding off. I asked my mom why we were leaving, and she said that the guy had what appeared to be a gun. I'm glad we got out of there, and I don't know what that guy was planning on doing, but I'm just happy that I'm here today.